Hi, welcome to AWS Tutorial Series. In this video, I'm going to explain you how to give internet access to private subnets using NAT. So this is the current architecture. This is the current networking architecture we have. We have VPC inside that we have one public subnet and one private subnet. Public subnet is getting access to internet via internet gateway here. And we do have a private subnet. Let's assume this private subnet has some DB servers and these servers need internet access for some reasons like for uh, applying patches or whatever, whatever the reason is. Now the question is how to give internet access to this private subnet. So before discussing about various options, let me explain why can't we use internet gateway or why should not we use internet gateway for giving internet access to private subnets. For example, if we give internet access to private subnet using internet gateway, these are the problems. Let's have a router for this private subnet. If we connect this router to internet gateway like this, yes, private subnet gets internet access, but there are some problems. The problem number one. So the bad guys from internet can access your private subnet and there is a possibility to hack the information available in your DB. So because internet gateway allows two-way communication, that is servers in your VPC or subnet can access internet. Likewise, the guys over internet can access your servers. So that's the primary problem with internet gateway uh, to give internet connections to the private subnets. And the second problem is for every server, for every EC2 instance in the private subnet, we must assign a public IP. So we all know public IPs are limited resources over internet. It's not a good idea to assign public IP or elastic IP for each and every EC2 instance in the private subnet. So those are the problems uh, if we use internet gateway for uh, private subnets. So because of that, we should always avoid using internet gateways for giving internet access to private subnets. But in case of public subnet, we, ha we don't have any other option because we have to put web servers in front of internet. Then only our customers can access these web servers. And we do take other measures to secure those web servers. And in case of private subnet, the best approach to use, the, uh, the best approach to implement for giving internet access is NATing. AWS comes with two options there one is NAT instance and other one is NAT gateway in this demo I'm I'm gonna show you how to use NAT instance as well as how to use NAT gateway for configuring internet access to private subnets we have to create a NAT instance NAT instance is nothing but EC2 instance which is configured for NATing primarily NAT allows only outbound traffic and it doesn't accept the inbound traffic which is initiated from the internet so the meaning is this so any server inside vpc via nat it can get access to internet but anybody over internet via this nat they can't access the servers inside of vpc as subnet so that way nat is highly secured it gives only outbound traffic uh, otherwise it gives only outbound internet tra traffic to our uh, uh, instances in private subnet but someone over internet cannot access our servers via this net so it is it provides security for us so we need to set up NAT in the public subnet why because all servers in private subnet going to get internet access via this NAT so NAT first must have internet access for that we need to set up NAT instance in the public subnet and we also need to assign a public IP for this NAT. That's first step here. So once NAT instance is configured in the public subnet, and this NAT instance now has internet access over this internet gateway, the next step is we need to add a route from the private subnet to this NAT instance, such that all servers in private subnet using NAT, they can access internet. So this approach is, I mean, uh, giving internet access via internet gateway is not correct approach. So instead, we need to add yeah. 
So pick this route table of private subnet, add a route to this NAT instance and now all servers in this private subnet via this NAT gets access to internet. So again I'm repeating this point, NAT allows only outbound traffic which is initiated by your EC2 instances in private subnet. NAT doesn't allow inbound traffic which is initiated by servers over internet. So that way your private subnets are highly secured. That's one benefit. The second benefit is there is no need of using public IPs in private subnet. So all your servers can still have private IPs and get access to internet. That's one more advantage because IP addresses are limited resources over internet. We, we are not using so many public IPs here. We're just getting one public IP for the NAT and thousands of servers might be in private subnet. Those servers not required any public IP there. Let's go ahead and set up a demo on this. Let's go and create our own custom VPC and two subnets. One is going to be public, other one is going to be private. And we also need to set up two different routers for each public and private and one internet gateway and let's see all those configurations now. Let's go and check our VPCs. Let's create a VPC. I'm naming it as Java Home VPC and coming to Cider Blocks, I'm keeping it as 10 20 0 0 16. Remaining, I'm leaving it as defaults there. Right? Let's go and create a couple of subnets. Yeah, I want this inside Java Home VPC there. Availability zone, we don't have any preference for this. Let's keep it as 1 and 24 there. So create this. Okay, let's go and create one more subnet. So this is a private subnet and I want the subnet inside Java Home VPC. This time instead of 1 let's put it as 2. Right. So let's go and create a couple of route tables. Create a route table. Let's call one as private subnets route table. I want this route table inside Java Home VPC. Let's create one more route table. Let's call this one as public subnets route table. So again, I want this route table inside this Java Home VPC itself. And let's associate public subnet to this public subnet route table and private subnet to this private subnet route table. So let's select this public subnets route table, go to subnet associations here, edit, attach the public subnet. And select private subnets route table, go to subnet associations. Yeah, obviously assign this private subnet for this route table. Next, we need to create internet gateway and attach this internet gateway to VPC. Let's create one. I'm calling this one as uh, Java Home Internet Gateway. Create. So initially its state is detached. We need to attach it. Yeah, we want to attach this one to Java Home VPC. The attachment is done. 
if you go and check back this diagram we created vpc we created a couple of subnets uh, we created route tables and we also created internet gateway here the only pending stuff is we need to set up this nat instance and configure this nat instance for the private subnet that completes our demo go and create nat instance now NAT instance is nothing but EC2 instance which is configured for NATing. So we have to launch NAT instances from this instances itself. Launch instance. Instead of going with quick start, we need to go with a community AMIs. In the community AMIs, we need to search for NAT. We get so many results here, and I'm just going with one specific NAT instance and choose instance type so i'm going with t1 micro instance details we need this nat instance in java home vpc plus we also need this nat instance in public subnet this is very important we need nat instance in public subnet not in private subnet and we also need public ip for this nat instance storage Let's go with default. Let's add a tag. And let's configure security group. For now, I'm keeping it wide open for all. But in, in case of real time, we need to keep this very restrictive launch it launch the instance instance is now launching that's coming up so yeah meanwhile uh, we should talk about source destination check aws performs a source and destination check on all ec2 instances the meaning is this in aws whenever instance sends a traffic it checks whether this instance is the source and destination of the traffic then only it lets the traffic to flow otherwise it blocks the traffic so for example we have a web server here which is running on EC2. Let's say I'm pinging Google from this web server. The source of the traffic is this. Again, the traffic reaches back to this web server. In this case, the source and destination is this EC2. So the source and destination check allows the traffic here. And let's take one more example. Let's say I have a EC2 instance which is running DB in private subnet. If I ping Google, this traffic flows via NAT, correct? In this case, the source and destination of this traffic is this instance, but the when the traffic enters into this NAT and the source destination check fails and this traffic is blocked. So because of that, we need to go and disable source and destination check for this NAT, then only the traffic can flow via this NAT. So we generally disable source and destination checks only for NAT instances, otherwise not. Okay, the server is running now. So select this NAT instance, go to actions, go to instance settings. Uh, sorry, go to networking. We have option change source destination check. So by default, this check is enabled, but for NAT, we need to disable it. Okay, all right. So we have this NAT instance in place. The next stuff, the next stuff we have to do is from private subnets route table, add a route to this NAT instance that completes our demo. Let's go and do that. So head back to VPC. Uh, 
uh, go to route tables let's filter let's filter route tables based on our vpc here Yeah, we have a uh, three route tables there so i'm interested in private subnet route table so select this private subnets route table go to routes edit add one more route here target is going to be nat instance don't select internet gateway here because for private subnet we are giving internet access using nat instance so select that so now the now all servers in private subnet via this router via this target which is NAT going to access internet that's it so we're done with the configuration now any server we launch in private subnet any server we launch in private subnet can get access to internet via this NAT we also need to update the public subnets route table uh, with internet gateway because a public subnet must have access to internet then only private subnets via NAT is going to get internet access for us go to route table of public subnet edit the target this time should be internet gateway and the value is all zeros here so the public subnet is configured with internet gateway and private subnet is configured with a NAT instance now all servers in public subnet gets access to internet via internet gateway and all servers in private subnet gets access to internet over NAT instance here that's all about the demo thanks for watching